before we go to graphing inverse functions, I want to go back to the top of our notes. Remember when we were talking about this and we were wondering what function could take this input and give us the same output? In other words, what is the inverse of 2x minus 3? Well, now you know you can find it. So if we go through those steps, just to practice, I would add 3 and divide by 2. So my inverse function would be x plus 3 divided by 2. So let's just see if it works. So if I put in negative 7 for x, negative 7 plus 3 divided by 2, sure enough is negative 2. If I plug in negative 1, I'm going to get positive 1. And if I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get 0. So, and if you notice, we were multiplying x by 2 and subtracting 3. Now we're adding 3 and dividing by 2. So that is a pretty reasonable check. But if I really wanted to verify it, you now know the steps of how to verify that that would be the inverse. Our last objective is how to graph inverse functions. And it's really the easiest. So we've just done the hardest. Now we need to do the easy one. So just like before, when we switched x and y, or we switched the domain and the range, that is reversing the ordered pairs. So what's going to happen? So we do have a function. It passes the vertical line test. It's also a one-to-one -one function. It also passes the horizontal line test. So we know it has an inverse function. So let's just take some certain points and write down the ordered pairs. So we have, I'm going to call this A, B, C. So A is 1, 2, 3, negative 4, negative 3. Point B is negative 1, negative 1. And C is 3, 7. Okay, so that's my function. Then my inverse would have the values of the domain and range, or my x's and y's reversed order. So I'm going to graph these three points. So negative 3, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. And 7, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3. And I'm going to connect them in like manner. Hmm, that looks like a bow tie. But I also want you to notice there's a line of symmetry. As in, if I held up a mirror along the line y equals to x, it would be a reflection. That's what inverses look like. They should be a reflection across the line y equals to x. So that's why that point stays the same, because x and y was the, were the same values. Now this graph doesn't have a lot of just big dots, but there's multiple dots. So we have this one, and maybe this one, and this one. So you can just pick a few. Okay, so again, I'm just going to kind of going to go in order a, b, c, d here. So A looks like 0, negative 4. B looks like 1, negative 3. C is 2, 0. And D is 3, 5. Inverse. And keep the same order. So you kind of connect the dots in the same order that they were given. So negative 4. One, let's see, 1, 2, 3, negative 4, 0, negative 3, 1, 0, 2, and 5, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. And I connect it in like manner. And sure enough, those certainly seem a mirror image across the line y equals to x.
Just going to do one more. Again, just pick some dots you can easily see the values of. Okay. So uh, you don't have to label them A, B, C, D. So this is the point 3, 0. Then this is 2, 1. This next one looks like negative 1, 2. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6, 3. and just reverse those ordered pairs. So I have 0, 3, 1, 2, 2, negative 1, and 3, two, negative 6. And just check for symmetry, and there you are. So Graphing inverse functions, very easy. Just pick some unique points, reverse X and Y, graph them, and then check for that symmetry.